This video is about graphing quadratic functions. A quadratic function, which is typically written in standard form, like this, or sometimes in vertex form, like this, always has the graph that looks like a parabola. This video will show how to tell whether the parabola is pointing up or down, how to find its x-intercepts, and how to find its vertex. The bare bones basic quadratic function is f of x equals x squared. It goes to the origin, since f of 0 is 0 squared, which is 0, and it is a parabola pointing upwards, like this. The vertex of a parabola is its lowest point if it's pointing upwards, and its highest point if it's pointing downwards. So in this case, the vertex is at 0, 0. The x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis, in other words, where y is 0. And in this function, y equals 0 means that x squared is 0, which happens only when x is 0. So the x-intercept, there's only one of them, is also 0. The second function, y equals negative 3x squared, also goes through the origin, since the function's value when x is 0 is y equals 0. But in this case, the parabola is pointing downwards. That's because, thinking about transformations of functions, a negative sign on the outside reflects the function vertically over the x-axis, making the parabola, instead of pointing upwards, reflecting the point downwards. The number 3 on the outside stretches the graph vertically by a factor of 3, so it makes it kind of long and skinny, like this. In general, a negative coefficient to the x squared term means the parabola will be pointing down, whereas a positive coefficient, like here the coefficient's 1, means the parabola is pointing up. I'll write that rule over here. So if a is bigger than 0, the parabola opens up, and if the value of the coefficient a is less than 0, then the parabola opens down. In this second example, we can see again that the vertex is at 0, 0, and the x-intercept is x equals 0. Let's look at this third example. If we multiplied our expression out, we'd see that the coefficient of x squared would be 2, a positive number. So that means our parabola is going to be opening up. But the vertex of this parabola will no longer be at the origin. In fact, we can find the parabola's vertex by thinking about transformations of functions. Our function is related to the function y equals 2x squared by moving it to the right by 3 and up by 4. Since y equals 2x squared has a vertex at 0, 0, if we move that whole parabola, including the vertex, right by 3 and up by 4, the vertex will end up at the point 3, 4. So our parabola will look something like this. Notice how easy it was to just read off the vertex when our quadratic function is written in this form. In fact, any parabola, any quadratic function written in the form a times x minus h squared plus k has a vertex at hk by the same reasoning. We're moving the parabola with a vertex at the origin to the right by h and up by k. That's why this form of a quadratic function is called the vertex form. Notice that this parabola has no x-intercepts because it does not cross the x-axis. For our final function, we have g of x equals 5x squared plus 10x plus 3. We know the graph of this function will be a parabola pointing upwards because the coefficient of x squared is positive. To find the x-intercepts, we can set y equals 0. Since the x-intercepts is where our graph crosses the x-axis, and that's where the y value is 0. So 0 equals 5x squared plus 10x plus 3. I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve that. So x is negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times 5 times 3, 
all over 2 times 5. That simplifies to x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 40 over 10, which simplifies further to x equals negative 10 over 10 plus or minus the square root of 40 over 10, which is negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root of 10 over 10, or negative 1 plus or minus square root of 10 over 5. Since the square root of 10 is just a little bit bigger than 3, this works out to approximately about negative 2 fifths and negative 8 fifths, so somewhere around right here. So our parabola is going to look something like this. Notice that it goes through, crosses the x-axis at y equals 3. That's because when we plug in x equals 0 into here, we get y equal 3. So the y-intercept is at 3. Finally, we can find the vertex. Since this function is written in standard form, the y equals ax plus x squared plus bx plus c form, and not in vertex form, we can't just read off the vertex like we could before. But there's a trick called the vertex formula, which says that whenever you have a function in a quadratic function in standard form, the vertex has an x-coordinate of negative b over 2a. So in this case, that's an x-coordinate of negative 10 over 2 times 5, or negative 1, which is kind of like where I put it on the graph. To find the y-coordinate of that vertex, I can just plug in negative 1 into my equation for x, which gives me y equals 5 times negative 1 squared plus 10 times negative 1 plus 3, which is negative 2. So I think I better redraw my graph a little bit to put that vertex down at a y-coordinate of negative 2, where it's supposed to be. Let's summarize the steps we use to graph these quadratic functions. First of all, the graph of a quadratic function has the shape of a parabola. The parabola opens up if the coefficient of x squared, which we call a, is greater than 0, and down if a is less than 0. To find the x-intercepts, we set y equal to 0, or in other words, f of x equal to 0, and solve for x. To find the vertex, we can either read it off as hk if our function is in vertex form, or we can use the vertex formula and get the x-coordinate of the vertex to be negative b over 2a if our function is in standard form. To find the y-coordinate of the vertex in this case, we just plug in the x-coordinate and figure out what y is. Finally, we can always find additional points on the graph by plugging in values of x. In this video, we learned some tricks for graphing quadratic functions. In particular, we saw that the vertex can be read off as hk if our function is written in vertex form, and the x-coordinate of the vertex can be calculated as negative b over 2a if our function is in a standard form. For an explanation of why this vertex formula works, please see my other video.